The reviews are in, and we're going to tell you what they are. He's Todd Vandenberg. He has the flu. I'm Rob Steele. I have allergies. Beware. The sniffles are coming. That needs to be a movie. That really... It, it kind of sounds like a movie. <laughs> the sniffles are coming. It does sound like a movie. Or a ta- Adam Sandler as the sniffle. Oh, and then it's going to be on Netflix. Yeah. Straight... Straight to the five dollar DVD bin. That's not what we're reviewing. Uh, although Todd, what what are you reviewing this week? It's a uh, movie that sounded like it should have been good. It's a movie that should have been good. It's Bad Samaritan, which I had high hopes for, and I just was one of these things that wasn't at the theaters very long, which has nothing to do with whether it's good or not. That happens to a lot of good films. Um, and I was thinking, oh man, I really wish I'd had time to catch it. Well, now it's available for free on Amazon Prime, so you can watch it if you. <clears throat> wish um, there are some reasons to watch it still because it does star David Tennant who is an excellent actor uh, it, it's in a rare villainous role for him and I say rare because normally he doesn't play villains uh, plays Doctor Who quite well but well, uh, uh, Kilgrave and, and Kilgrave one of the very best Marvel villains one of the to me one of the top three Marvel villains in any of the mm-hmm. incarnations of mm-hmm. film or TV uh, but so he plays a villain in this one. Uh, basically, he plays a serial killer, which they show you in the preview. So I'm not giving anything away. That is found by a couple of guys who are actually found by one guy who they do a valet parking valet service. And when they get your keys to your car, they figure out, oh, do you? Are you probably worth robbing? Yeah. So then they'll, if your house is close enough, they'll go to your house rob your stuff and then come back and give you your car and no one's the wiser kid does this he goes to david Tennant's house and he finds that there's a girl chained up in the dude's office and things ensue from there as he's trying to figure out how best to let this be known without having him be outed as being a thief so things progress from there basically turns into a cat and mouse game between the kid and david Tennant. uh that aspect of it is really good. The performances are really good. Tenet's excellent. Uh, he could have had better lines because the script's not great. But he's still David Tennant. Robert Sheehan plays the young kid. He's actually very good, very entertaining. I definitely look forward to seeing him in something else. He's an Irish actor and a kid. Hmm. Well, he's 30 years old. Doesn't look like he's 30, but he is. Anyway. The problem with this movie... 30? Sorry, just caught that. I know. He doesn't 30. look at it all. No, he doesn't. It's like he barely looks like he's 20. So he's he's taking the Tom Holland juice. Maybe something about Great Britain. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, because, yeah, definitely. It's like he, he absolutely looks like he's like maybe in his 20s or something. But anyway, the problem is the script. <laughs> The, the huge problem is the script. You know, how in a lot of these thrillers, there are moments where, you know, you want to shout at the screen. It's like, why are you doing that? This movie is full of them. <laughs> and it's also full of things that make no sense. Like just the cops come to Tenet's character's house. And I don't remember the name of the character. And I don't, I'm not going to bother trying to look it up because I don't feel well enough to even bother with that. And it doesn't matter because that's not his real name anyway in the film. So the cops come to the house to investigate and his tenant's girlfriend is magically there and which she wasn't there before. So he managed to whisk her there in, in just that brief amount of time. And he has the cops come in and walk around and the girl's no longer in the office. Of course, uh, Things magically happen so quickly that there's no way that Tennant could have done all this stuff in the short amount of time that he has to do the things that he does in this film. And it's it's just done that way because it's lazy writing. Because they have to make him seem like, oh, he's five steps ahead of the game. He's five steps ahead of the game and apparently also has the time stone because he didn't have time to do some of this crap. It's <laughs> It's, it just has so much of that, which is really, really sad because it really wastes a couple of good performances, which if they'd had a good script as opposed to a mediocre script, could have been an excellent movie. Um, and what's really sad is the script, I can kind of see why, uh, because it's directed by Dean Devlin, and I didn't see that until the very end of the film when the credits were rolling. It's like, ah, huh, okay, this kind of makes sense now because Dean Devlin... 
has written some pretty good movies. He has written like uh, Independence Day. Which is a good film. He's also done like Universal Soldier, one of these sequels. Um, yeah. Could have been a better film. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's very, very uneven in in what he's done. So it's not too surprising that there are problems with the, the, the script just because you just don't know what you're getting with this guy. And this is definitely a case where, boy, you really needed someone to to tighten this thing up. So, oh, he also wrote Geostorm, which, oh, my God, just just the trailer for that garbage is enough to make you feel sick. Oh, yeah, Godzilla, as in the horrible American version of Godzilla. Not huh? not 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 the one that came out three years ago. They came the one that came out thirty years ago. The trash fest. Uh, so is it that long? Yeah, God, I'm old. Thirty years ago. So he's done some good stuff and he's done some crap stuff, and this falls into the crap category. I'm sad to say, because man, uh, and the sad thing is, this could have been a really interesting story it's it's interesting but not in in, not in the right way just a utter waste of 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 uh, david Tennant's talents because like you mentioned it's like in playing kilgrave is like absolutely terrific performance a lot of it has to do of course with the way the character is written and uh, there's there's no redeeming quality there's no interesting quality there's nothing good about that makes you have any kind of a rooting interest for the killer, which that's kind of the point of doing these serial killer movies. Hopefully you have some, because if they can subvert it and make you root for the killer, which good filmmakers can do, then you'd feel kind of like, God, what the hell is wrong with me? Well, there's no moment like that in, in this film. It's just very by the book paint by numbers. And it's like done for like a five-year-old level, not like the adult coloring book. So it's sad, and the fact that it's free on Amazon, it, it's still going to take like an hour and a half of your time. So you have better things to do, like I don't know, cut, clip your toenails or something. So I would avoid Bad Samaritan. Oh dear, not a good thing. No. <clears throat> okay, so so for the film I was going to do, I was trying to figure out what you, cause I, I've seen a lot of stuff. I haven't seen anything in the theater recently because there hasn't hasn't been anything I was interested in seeing. So I said, you know, I'll look up on IMDb and see whose birthday is today, and I'll review one of their movies. Oh, that's cool. Unfortunately, the only person I recognized <laughs> by name was Burt Lancaster. And yes, today is his birthday. Are you knocking Burt Lancaster? Died in 1994. Are you knocking Burt Lancaster? Is that what you're doing? Well, I know who he he was. <laughs> Don't be but I looked through his movie list, and I didn't really I – don't, I don't think I've seen any of these things. Um – one that did catch my eye was Elmberg Gantry. Really? Uh, <laughs> That's the first one that popped into my head. Seriously, I was the reason say that Elmer Gantry. popped into my head was because I saw a poster of it, Burt Lan- starring Burt Lancaster and Gene Simmons, and I thought he did a movie with a long tongued bass playing demon from Kiss. <laughs> no, that would have been an awesome movie. It's, it's it's not that Gene Simmons. It's it's the female Gene with a J. A wonderful actress, by the way. She is. Um. And I said, you know what? I can't do any of Burt Lancaster's movies, and I don't know anyone else on this list because it's all – I was on a Nickelodeon show, so screw that. And I went back to Monday because I knew Monday was Ralph Batsky's birthday. Ah. Uh, or Bash, Bakshi, Bak, you know who I'm talking about. Exactly who you're talking the about. The guy who did the weird animated movies. I know what movie you're going to talk about too. You do actually, probably, because it's called Wizards, mm-hmm. uh, which – God, this movie's weird. <laughs> yes, it is. But but at the same time, it's it's a. Ma- I'm going to recommend this that you watch it sober. <laughs> Would you say it's groundbreaking? I I might say it's that that's a completely different episode. <laughs> I would say it, it it's probably groundbreaking. It's just so bizarre. It is. Um and yeah, I, I'd be worried if you if you weren't so drunk maybe. Anything beyond that, you are on your own, and <laughs> God help you, provided there is one. That's another show again. Wizards animated movie came out in, what was it, 77, I think. 77, you got 77, it. 77, um, which I did not watch it 
when it came out because I was six and it would have scared the crap out of me. What if? Um, the movie is uh, set very far in the future, um, and it's kind of a. I think the best description actually came from IMDb, which called it a blend of World War II Europe and Tolkien's Middle Earth. Yep. How bizarre is this? Elves and dwarves and fairies have come back. So have orcs and trolls and goblins. And they're on two separate sides. On one side, you have uh, the, the elves and the fairies and stuff, and they're led by Avatar, the good wizard. And the trolls and the goblins are led by Black Wolf, which is a great name. It's a great name. Uh, Avatar's twin brother, weirdly, who for some reason has absolutely no skin or muscles on his forearms. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Oh, yeah. Was that, that's just kind of – I don't know how he gets everything to move because there's nothing there. It's just <laughs> a bone. It's magical. His hands are fine. Yeah, they're both wizards. Anyway, Black Wolf keeps trying to take over the planet using the – orcs and the goblins and the trolls but they have no motivation at all to get it done they kind of go oh we're gonna attack oh, i'm bored and they wander off <laughs> but then black wolf finds something to motivate his troops and this is where the movie gets even weirder he finds old nazi propaganda and shows it with a magic pro a projector he imbued with magic. So all of his troops constantly see this Nazi propaganda. They get them fired up and they begin wiping out everything else. So Avatar has to lead uh, his small team of people, which consists of a, a fairy queen named El – I think she's a queen – named Eleanor. She's a queen. Might be a princess. She's a queen. Well, she, okay. And uh, – the warrior Wee Hawk, which is almost a cool name, and a captured robot that Black Wolf sent to assassinate the president quite successfully, I might add. It's in the first five minutes. That's not a spoiler. No. Uh, who was originally named Necron 99, but they renamed him Peace in hope that he would bring it. Look at the hippies. <laughs> um <laughs> Anyway, the, the, the fairies and the elven people do not use technology at all whatsoever, whereas the orcs are good with using guns and tanks and planes and stuff, and it sounds very lopsided, and you know what? It is. But I am going to recommend watching this movie because, because of the way it's done, uh, which is very trippy, especially the two-legged horses. I don't understand that. <laughs> But it, it's – and I'm not going to say that there's – look at the cast on this movie. Yeah, the cast on this movie consists of, what, Mark Hamill in a cameo. <laughs> uh, a lot of people – he played Sean the elf who lasts, what, two lines before someone shoots him. <laughs> um, most of the movie is very, very serious, but every so often there are these tangents into – bizarre religious background stuff usually uh, oh my god they killed Fritz is a wonderful scene <laughs> Fritz Fritz they killed Fritz oh man that um, scene's awesome not quite dead man anyway uh, spectacular movie and frankly I am going to say sit through to the end of the movie yes because it contains what I am considering one of the greatest death scenes in the history of movies. I'm not going to tell you who dies. I'm not going to tell you, you know, the good guys win, the bad guys win. I'm not going to say that. It does contain a spectacular death scene. So it's not Fritz. It's not Fritz. He he <laughs> died several times before that. <laughs> Uh, Wizards is available currently on Amazon Prime or YouTube or iTunes or Google Play, much like much like this show. Um, <laughs> only we're cheaper because we have a smaller budget. Yes. Anyway, yeah, Wizards. It's a it's a really bizarre, trippy movie. Watch it sober. Um, on uh, otherwise, you are very much on your own. That is a fact. I, I agree. I really like Wizards, and I just watched it again maybe two or three weeks ago. Um, like I said, it's very crazy, trippy, fun, and it's very much of its time, the, yeah. seven, the 70s, which is 
fine. Um, but it, it is almost like opening up a, a going back in a in a time machine or using the time stone because it's. And I'm not talking about the the setting of like the far flung future with World War II mixed in. It's just the way it's done and the the themes of you know peace and love and blah blah blah. Um, I was slightly disappointed to find out that Avatar was not voiced by Columbo himself. <laughs> he sounds Avatar sounds like Columbo. He does. Just one more question, kind of thing. It's Bob Holt who did a bajillion cartoon voices in the seventies. That's so the performances are really good. They are, they are. And the, the animation is a really weird mix really? of kind of what you'd think of as normal animation and a lot of rotoscoping, which is really effective. And especially when it's cause it's done in a lot of the war scenes. It's good yes. stuff. It is it's very nice to have a movie to recommend as to go along with the one that we don't. So it, it's not a movie for everyone. That's for sure. No. And it's not for kids. It's animated, but it's not Just because it's for animated kids. doesn't make it for kids. Yes. So we'll, we'll, we'll review Akira someday and talk about this not for kids thing. Yeah, for sure. Oy. Until a, then, yeah. uh, have a good weekend and go see a movie. That's pretty much it.